Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and I'm here today diving into the newest Illustrative Faith and Dayspring devotional kit. This is created to create two. I will have the unboxing video linked down below for you, as well as my affiliate link to where you can pick up the kit for yourself if you haven't already. Um, this kit is only $20 and it's going to be a good one, so go check it out. I'm working on week one. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a booklet like I did last month or maybe something different. Give me some ideas down in the comments down below, maybe something different that you would like to see um, me do with those cards and we'll just change it up, do something different. I've also pulled out the old stamp set from the kit last year. This is no longer available, but I'm showing you here, I'm going to be using the word created and there is a die cut piece that's very similar. So if you wanted to recreate my page, you could use that die cut piece and you could even use it to just trace onto your page from underneath if you didn't want to have that big um, die cut piece in there. I'm also going to be featuring the Illustrated Faith watercolors in today's video. These were sent to me by Dayspring um, and they are super fun and exciting and they're currently on sale for only $10 until September 5th so be sure to go check that out. I will tell you a little bit more about them here in a few minutes um, but I really enjoyed them. So I'm just kind of trying just to decide what I'm going to do for this entry. It took me longer to plan out the page than it actually took to create the page. I don't know. I was just feeling the pressure today, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to dive in here uh, and I'm going to show you uh, here how I prep my stamps. The ones from Dayspring I have found that I need to either rub onto my arm or use an eraser over the top of them just to kind of dirty them up a little bit and that way the ink doesn't just bead up on these stamps. It kind of preps the stamps so they hold the ink a little bit better. So it's just a little bit of a tip for you. Uh, I'm going to be using Versify and Onyx Black ink. This ink does bleed through. My page is not prepped. Uh, I will show you bleed through towards the end and you can see what bled through and what didn't. Another tip with these stamps is the Dayspring stamps are a little bit mushy. Uh, some of the other stamps from the other companies I've used are a little bit harder. Um, these are softer, which is fine. You just have to be careful when you use them. So don't push down super, super hard when you're stamping, especially with these that have detail, like that one brush that says created to create. If you push down too hard, you're going to lo lose that detail. So you do want to push down hard enough that you get a good impression, but don't go mushing it down into the page. So just practice and figure out what um, pressure works the best. So I'm going to go ahead and do some stamping here. And again, I'm working in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 26. Uh, Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 26 says, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then it goes on from there. And so it's this idea that uh, in the beginning, God created, and then God created us in his image. Therefore, uh, God created us with creativity. <laughs> and so I am excited to dive into the devotional this month and see how uh, Shauna uh, elaborates on that. And uh, I like what she says here. She says, you may be thinking, but I can't draw a stick figure. Oh, friend, how silly would it be for God to give us all the same artistic ability? And so I wanted to elaborate on that just a little bit. And this idea that uh, creativity can manifest itself in a lot of different ways. So you might not be creative with art supplies and that kind of thing, um, which is kind of my niche. It may be something else. It may be photography. It may be um, fashion. It Like your clothes match. Mine don't, but yours might. <laughs> it might be interior design. It may even be that you're super creative with your uh, budgeting and your financing. Man, I would trade you some of my uh, artistic creativity to have some budgeting creativity let me tell you. So uh, think out of the side of the box. Look in your life and look in the areas of where you're creative. And um, I think you would be surprised if you really sit down and think about it. Um, there are, is a way that you are creative. It just might not be how you're thinking or what's super obvious. Um, and it definitely is not going to be how somebody else is creative. And so I think that's the really fun part about what makes us unique is that we all are creative in a little bit different of a way. So on the page here, I you can see I masked off that older stamp, so I just stamped the word created. And then I just did some simple hand lettering, and then now I'm going over it with my uh, Tombow Feud Calligraphy Pen. This is becoming a new favorite for me. I've had some great friends that have kind of given me some guidance and tips on how to use that pen, and I'm liking it more and more. And I have discovered in my Bible page, it does not bleed through when it gets wet, or doesn't bleed when it gets wet. So another point in the pro file, I guess. It's just, it's 
it's a good pen. Give it a try. I will have all the products linked down below if you want to order something. Check that out. Uh, to add color to my page, I'm going to be using the Illustrated Faith watercolors. Uh, like I said, these are new to me. I usually use the Kiritake Gonzai Tombi watercolors. <laughs> what a mouthful. Um, those are a very unique watercolor in that they are very uh, pigmented, but they're also slightly opaque. They're almost like a gouache. It's a very unique formula that they're made out of. And so when I dove into these, I was a little bit hesitant as I was dipping into the paint because I'm used to using the Kiritake where I barely have to touch them so that I'm not going to block out the words. Um, it's just, they're just, you have to get used to using them if you've been using traditional watercolors that are a little bit different. Uh, so once I figured out that I needed to kind of dig into the paint just a little bit more, I really enjoy these paints. They are gorgeous colors. They're very smooth to use. They are more of your traditional watercolor in that they're transparent. And that's not a bad thing. That's just typically how watercolors um, behave. And for those of you who are concerned about covering the words, these are a great paint for you. I could layer and layer and layer and layer. And I don't know that I could fully mask out the lettering with these paints. So they are great. Um, you may be looking at this and saying, well, it's kind of a limited color palette. Don't worry, I'm going to show you. You can do some mixing. And this is a fun way to kind of explore with the color wheel and just learning how to make new colors and how that works. And so you can see here, I'm using the white in the palette to add it to this pink. And that white is going to add some opacity to these colors. And so I'm going to be creating kind of a flesh tone like there is in the kit. And by adding that white, I'm creating kind of a milky, more opaque color. I don't know that it would ever get fully opaque where I could cover the words, um, but you can see it's definitely looking a little bit different in consistency than just the straight colors from the pan. Um, I tried using the brush from the kit, and it is very fluffy and very soft, and I found that it made the color even more transparent. So I've switched to a smaller detail brush and I kind of like that better, but I'll talk about that other brush in just a second and what I'm gonna love it for. So don't throw it away, it's got a purpose. <laughs> uh, and then here, there wasn't really that reddish orange color in this palette, but I'm showing you just by mixing some orange and that reddish pink color, I'm able to get that reddish orange that's um, used in the kit. This is also very similar to color to the kit uh, Doodles to Live By that Elaine Davis did. And this is kind of that same color uh, that you can create just by mixing a couple colors. Um, this pan or this tin comes with great areas to mix colors on. You have plenty of room. You don't have to wash this off. Just let it dry, close up your tin, and then just activate those colors with water at a later time, and they're ready to go again. So uh, don't feel like you finally mixed the perfect color and then you have to get rid of it. You can just let it dry onto the tin and then activate it later. So, And then you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, you've ruined your white. Don't worry. You can just scrub the top of it with a clean, damp brush and wipe it off in a paper towel, and it'll pick up the color that's on the top, and you'll have clean colors once again. So I get kind of messy when I'm watercoloring. That's just what I do. <laughs> uh, I was kind of persnickety about it at first. I was really careful, but now I just kind of go for it. Uh, watercolors are definitely one of my favorite mediums to play with. If you've been using the Artist Loft, I would encourage you to try these out. It's a huge difference from the Artist Loft paints. Here I'm showing you there's no brown in this uh, set of watercolors, but we can make a brown. Some of you who are professional artists are probably looking at this like, what are you doing? That's not how you do it. But we get there in the end, don't worry. <laughs> if you mix orange and that blue, you can kind of get a gray. And then I added some yellows and things like that to get a warmer brown tone and then switched it to a cooler brown. I don't know. It kind of went all over the place, but I got a brown in the end. And so I would encourage you, play, explore. There's plenty of paint in these pans. Even though they seem kind of small, they really are um, pigmented and don't take very much to get color. So play with it. Here is where this big fluffy brush shines. You all know my affinity for paint splatters on my page. It's kind of my thing. And this brush is great. It makes a mess, so beware. But it gives such a good variety of big splatters and little splatters. And you can just load it up with plenty of color. 
this is going to be my go-to spotter brush, so <laughs> it has a purpose. Um, my desk is a mess after this, but it's okay. It's watercolor, water-based. It's super easy to wipe up and clean. I went ahead and did some journaling off uh, screen here, and then now I'm taking some of the Illustrated Faith Word Fetty and adding those to my page in this blank area down here. It says, I color in my Bible. Of course, that's my favorite way to be creative. I'm also going to add some of the washi tape. I've seen a lot of you saying that you are in love with this washi tape. It is so cute. I think for my entries for this kit, I'm going to do this where I add this washi tape to the gutter of my pages. That way, they're all kind of tied together, and you can see that they are all from the same kit. I'm going to take some of the elements from the stickers, and I know, like what, one video ago I said that I wasn't going to add tabs to my Bible? Yep, here's a tab. So I gave in, added a tab, and you can see on the back there, the only thing that bled through was my stamping. None of the paint or pen bled through. So I added a few of those stickers. I'm going to outline my Word Fetty stickers. Uh, I think that I'm just not going to use paper clips in this Bible. I'll just use paper tabs. I don't know, maybe next video I'll change it up and add a paper clip. We'll see. I'm going to go back in and add some dot detail with my Faber Castell Big Brush Marker. Um, that is something that I saw in the designs of the kit, some dot detail, and I'm just using that as inspiration to wrap it up. So that is it for the entry today. Please leave me a comment or any questions down below in the comments. Uh, also check out the description bar down below the video. I'll have links to all of the products used. Those are affiliate links, so just heads up, um, but you can check those out down there. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and until next time thank you so much bye bye